And right now we have the crew from Sofa King. Sofa King, uh, the <laughs> the the wittiest thing when I was a teenager uh, was was that. <laughs> um, and so I love that there's a movie called Sofa King. Um, but this team has been with us multiple times uh, throughout the course of the festival. And I'm so excited to see you um, and really excited to see you, especially during these difficult times. How are you? Thank you for having us back. You, uh, you have been so incredibly gracious to our uh, little production company that can. Well, it's, it's awesome. I, I love what you do. It's, I'm, it's, a, it's a thrill to every time that I get to see. It's such a treat to see any of your work. Um, I, I really, really love this film. Uh, I, I, I have to say, like, it's... Uh, uh, but this, this film, it really, it's... I think a lot of your work kind of has a similar taste uh, to mine in the sense that it draws back from those kind of 90s films or, um, and I don't want to compare uh, necessarily, but like that kind of Kevin Smith or uh, those dialogue driven, those character driven films um, that are that are really just focusing on a character works so well for what you produce. Um, and it doesn't feel expositionary or that we're getting this like information dump. We really just invest in people and move on. Is this uh, a kind of thesis for your organization or is it just I, yeah, what you I think, like? I think that, you know, what we've, and Chris and I were just talking about this before, in that when you're working small, especially in film, uh, there are things you learn you can do and there are things you learn you probably can't do or shouldn't even try to do. Um, but one of the things you absolutely can do is you can center on great performances. You can try to give actors pieces that uh, tell a story, flesh out a character, and you can find tons of great people who will populate a world for you. And you know your your visual effects aren't going to be stellar, um, and you may not be able to shoot in you know six different capitals in Europe, but you can tell a compelling story that has great people in it. And I that's the part of storytelling and, and narrative that I was always drawn to. Um, so it's great to always keep that at the center of whatever project we're doing is um, it's about the characters, it's about the people. And then also in the production sense, it's about the people. It's about getting what the people need to do this, the, the, the story um, and not approaching it from, uh, you know, kind of a, a more traditional breakdown of a, a larger budget film, but thinking, how do we center this on great story and great performance? And that's really the things we come back to is story and performance again and again. Um, so that's that's definitely a conscious choice, I think, in uh, the scripts we develop and then all through pre-production through post is centering things on that. I mean, Chris, when you're writing this, is that just a huge part of the idea of this dude who's not leaving the sofa? Um, that well, you know that you can just focus in on one one area and, and do it? Well, this particular script started off as a play that I produced back in 2004. So it was built with that beautiful limitation. Uh, I was I was directing and inspired to just make the audience have to watch this person sit on stage. And, the, and I'm endlessly gracious to Kevin for being the one to like push the walls out and being like, we're gonna start dreaming People are gonna get a little too high and we're gonna have to leave the couch. And so uh, I think part of it is, yeah, you get to center on this. I, I, I watched it again today, so I'll indulgently say, it's nice to have this movie that takes place in somewhat of real time. Like you're watching everyone work through the things that they're working through. And so often we jump in and out of movies that like, here's a moment that matters, here's a moment that matters. And you're like, all these important moments get to get stacked up for one reason or another, but here we get to watch him organically go through kind of this process, this day where he's working through this. Uh, I, and it's just lovely to be able to land on the couch, figuratively and literally, and be able to you know spend some time with these people. And Kevin, uh, guiding this um, with really like, not uh, monumental shifts in performance, but like really finding a way to drive this along subtly and honestly. Uh, can you talk about um, f the process in that? And I would imagine that the day to day of being on a couch for uh, for a full length film of like putting the actors in the headspace of where they're at at that given time and what those given circumstances are. Certainly. Uh, 
Well, interestingly, that couch has been in my life for a long time. That was my friend's college futon uh, <laughs> that they were sitting on. So that has been ingrained in me. Um, and actually, I, I can't take too much credit on that because I've got to give the uh, kudos to the performers there uh, and the script. Um, but I, I've worked with Paul and Chandler who play Matt and Beth uh, I worked with Paul once before. No, I worked with both of them twice before, actually, on uh, shorts and then Family Obligations. Chandler was in uh, that Ken directed, um, and I'm very gracious to the fact that we have a very open and honest working relationship. Where uh, sometimes, to the chagrin of working quickly, we would have these very long conversations about like, what What are we thinking? What are you thinking? What's your character thinking? What's the audience thinking? And I like to open that up to the performers and have that discussion um, in an honest and kind of like sometimes uncomfortable way, to be honest. I mean, it, it shows that the work is there and there's a real subtlety and real thoughtful performance happening because that's what you hang on to in a film like this. That's what the point of it all is. Um, and so, Chris, were you the were you the lead when you originally did the play version of this? Yes, I was. So, what made you decide that you were going to transition out to this other role? I I can't play a twenty year like I'm a good actor, but I can't play a twenty year old who's uh, waffling between what he's going to do with his life at this point. Uh, so, I aggressively wrote myself a part as the big brother to be able to come in and add some gravity to it, like the, the wonderful uh, joy of it, because. Uh, my goddaughter, Ken's daughter, was the one who was like, why don't you guys make plays anymore? And so Shauna, Ken's wife, uh, my sister-in-law was like, could you make this play into a movie? And uh, when you do that, obviously you have to push out. So I was like, I'm gonna, I can't be that guy on the couch anymore. I'm gonna be the older kind of asshole brother <laughs> who, who puts down some gravity for him. I don't, I don't know why it felt like like a Ben Affleck kind of performance. Totally. You came in and like totally like set the stage and like it just uh, it was really cool. This, Thank and you. I, I feel like it's really different from the other performances I've seen of yours too. Hey, if you're um, going to write yourself a, like a part, write yourself something where you get to choose some scenery. I mean, that's the that's the point, right? <laughs> that's the point. Why of not? This. Um, I, I just, uh, I have to say, like, uh, it's really cool to see the progression of the different kinds of films and avenues that you're, uh, you're both focusing on. Are you working on anything new now? Um, or is the, is the quarantine taking over everything? <laughs> we were all going to be uh, shooting another feature. It was originally supposed to shoot in the spring. Um, and uh, it just kind of got pushed and pushed and pushed. And then it's going to hopefully um, be back again this spring. And, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to stay as active as we can and, and uh, do things. But we do have a, another feature called My Sister's Wedding coming up, um, which we shot on Long Island in the coming spring, we hope, certainly. Um, but uh, that's going to we're going to all reunite for that. And then, uh, you know, uh, who knows where the journey takes us beyond there. Yeah. And are you all based in New York? Chris is in Los Angeles. Okay, I thought Chris had gone to... Right, and Kevin and I are, are in New York. We're on, we're on Long Island. We're Long Island boys. Yeah. Yeah, I, I felt that that Long Island-ism being a Long Islander myself. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm I trying to, you know, forcefully insinuate myself into uh, Long Island film scenes that, that just don't want to have me. Uh, <laughs> we're yeah. trying to, I'm trying to make Why this not? work, you know? Um, but I do, I do actually, I really do enjoy... Uh, working around here because it does it has like a kind of a personal you know meaning to everything you do and it's places that you like went to school and 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 you know hung out and stuff like that so um and it was fun for me too because like Chris wrote that play in 2004 and like I you know videoed that at the time and I remember looking through the lens at uh the play in this tiny black box downtown and then to you know 15 years later be DPing this uh, you know, seeing this in a, in a new form with new people, but kind of still having the same kernel of the idea, um, you know, it's, it's pretty magical to be able to kind of revisit a piece of your past like that. 
I just I can't uh, wait till we do the VR version of it in like 20 years. We're just going to keep and I'll play the father. Musical. Yeah, there's a musical version in the works. Uh, we're going to do something that's totally TikTok stories. Um, Great. Yeah, it's yeah. all vertical. We're yeah, exactly. We're gonna we're gonna break into a square aspect ratio. Um, <laughs> we're just gonna keep con- just just gonna squeeze this orange until all the juice is out. <laughs> Well, the development definitely showed. Um, it definitely it bode well for what you created. Um, and I'm excited to see anything that you create um, with your company. I've just, uh, again, this though feels really particularly special to me. And I hope a lot of people get a chance to see it. And it has long legs because it's just, uh, it's the kind of movie that you don't see anymore. And I think that, you know, it's funny we keep coming back to that. I see you a year later, and I'm like, "This is the kind of movie you don't see anymore." It's and I it, really love these movies. I like, know. I'm, I really hope that the environment with with so many different avenues for people to get content and so many different streaming services, I'm hoping things like this can find a, a place. Because um, I feel like when you share this with people, they have that reaction of like, "I used to watch movies like this, and movies like these. This used to be in theaters, um, and that's a you know a bygone thing, and that's that's okay, but." I hope that, um, you know, I hope that continue. Cause again, you know, I think you ch- end up making the things that you want to see, or at least I try to, I try to make things that, um, you know, interest me as a, as an audience member. Um, so I hope that, I hope that we can keep, you know, kind of, uh, tapping into those interests and, and, you know, creating that kind of content. Ken's and saying that he wants you to see one of those movies every year and it's at our hands. I would, you know what, nothing would make me happier. That's what he's about, saying. How do, we, how do we make our money? We don't make any money. But if we were going to make Volume. money, we would make our money. Volume. That's exactly it. Body of work. Just keep hanging posters on the wall until there's no more space. Well, I think you have a great body of work. I think that um, what's going to happen is it's all going to tip like a dominoes, you know, and everyone's going to get to see all of this because um, people are starved for this. I, they are. I, they, they are. I Appreciate know that it. they are. And I see the, I see the reaction every time that you have a movie in the festival and um, and Kevin did such a wonderful job directing this. And I know how difficult totally. that is to be uh, on that, like in a, to take a, like a, a play concept and turn it into a movie. And this is a movie. This is a movie with subtle, real honest performances, and it's funny, and um, just thank you. Thank you. It's a real evolution of of the career of Kevin Wolfring because the mix, Chain 2016, graphic designer, Mm -hmm. Too Much Noise, Chain 2018, Too Much Noise editor, Family Allegations, Chain 2019, assistant director and editor, Chain 2020, director of the film. So we and don't have film. another rung on the ladder to put him up on. <laughs> he's really, you know, now he's going to be our boss, I guess, for the next one. So uh, there you go. This really just tells, tells the story of the ascent of Kevin Wolfring. Started from the bottom and now, as they yeah. say, we're right here. <laughs> well, honestly, to really speak to just like Kevin's ability to collaborate, it was after the uh, table read that Kevin came to me and we had like a really hard talk about how a lot of the remnants of the old script weren't working. And I, I give all the credit in the world to Kevin because he talked to me honestly and directly. And we had a great conversation uh, in a great friendship that I think made the movie that we, that you see right now. And I couldn't be more proud of them. So honestly, huge kudos to that man right there. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Congratulations to you all. Um, it's an honor to have you all back, and uh, I can't wait to see the next one. Thank you so much for joining. We're going to get that to you as quick as we can. Sure, you're awesome. <laughs> yes, please. And uh, stay in touch. Um, you guys are great. Absolutely. Thank you, Kirk. Thanks very much. Thanks, Kirk. <laughs>